Burgess here with Music Marketing TV, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at Sequoia 17 and checking out its ability to sequence drums. This is something that actually may be a bit confusing if you're coming from another DAW, and if you're new, it can be extremely confusing. So I'm gonna show you the setup that I like to use and how we can get it uh, rocking and rolling. So first, let's start off with a new project. So it's gonna end up looking something like this. This is just a really basic loop. And something that's kind of interesting for those who are coming from other DAWs, you can apply effects to just singular audio clips as objects. And the notion of like just a track playing is kind of a bit different because while it is a track playing, they also index like each sample individually. And when you hit play, you can watch them go through. And you can come through and edit a singular, like you could click on one thing and then go to the object editor and add an effect to just that one thing and it'll apply uh, just there. And this leads to some really interesting workflows and potential creative possibilities. But let's go ahead and start up a new project. So we're gonna go new project. I'm gonna call it like drum sequencing. I don't know, we'll call it three because I have a two hanging around. And we start off with just a blank area. Now, if your layout doesn't match mine, uh, I like to move the transport up to the top. So normally, I think by default, it sits down here like this. And I don't like this being down here when I'm constantly looking up here for controls anyways. So I like to move it on up to the top and dock it in this top area. So this is where it lives right now. And we need to set up our grid. So you may be looking for, if you look it up, there's actually a drum editor. If you add a MIDI object, there's a drum option. And if you wanna use a sampler plugin and do it through there, that can be a cool way to do it, but it requires you to have like an extra plugin. Uh, so I just wanna use uh, Sequoia itself. So we're not going to be using that method. Uh, we need to set up the grid and we're just gonna drag and drop onto the grid. And this allows you to take full advantage of the object editor, which in my opinion is cooler anyways. So first we're gonna turn on the snap setting and this is going to allow us when we move objects to snap to something and we want them to snap to the beat, right? Typically like 16th notes. So we're gonna turn snap to objects to snap to a beats bars relative. And then once this is active, we now have the option to turn on snap to quantization. So snap to quantization will allow us to snap to uh, whatever our quantization setting is at. So if we have it at, you know, a beat, it'll snap to a beat according to the time signature. And if we have it set to 16th, it will snap to 16th notes. Now, if we look here, our grid is labeled in time and that's not what we want. So we're going to right click on it and change it to bars beats. And now we can see measure one, and then we have beat two of measure one, beat three of measure one, that's what these colons mean. And if we zoom in further, we get these subdivisions, and I'm doing that by holding control and shift. So first you sort of need to wrap your head around how this grid works. Now let's drag um, some audio on. So we're gonna go to the files down here. And in files, we can choose our different things. Let's start off with some kicks. So uh, I recommend having, you know, some samples to use for this. And let's go for, uh, let's drag the name out here so we can see them a bit better. Oh, we've got a monster's kick. So let's try that out. Maybe something a little more housey. We'll go for, I like that one. So we'll go ahead and drag this on up. You may get a dialogue. I've decided to turn the dialogue off. Just say, don't show me anymore. Uh, but here we are, it's here. And if we move it, it snaps, as you can see, to the 16th notes. So this is super handy dandy. So with this on, I like to trim them up to just however long they actually need to be so that they're easier to work with. You may find it helpful to make them exactly a beat. And let's just do a four to the floor. So we're gonna grab it and just select it and hit control D and this will duplicate it and we'll set up a loop to go from one to two. And then if you hit the home key on your keyboard, if you have a full sized keyboard, that'll bring your playhead back to the front and we can play this and we'll hear it um, if we're in the area and 
we'll hit home. So that's what we have. Now, if you wanted to loop, there is a loop option up here. So you click that. And that'll set your playback to always use the loop. And that, that's what we have so far. By the way, when I was clicking down here and hearing the samples, I had the auto play, this lock icon on. And that is the auto play. So you can hear what's happening. Okay, so that's our kick. Let's grab one more kick. Uh, sure, why not? That, that could be a nice layer kick. So we'll grab this one and drag it on. I am going to make this track a smidge smaller so we have room to drag it on. And I'm going to have this one line up. Oh, it doesn't seem to want to line up here. Here, let's zoom in. And let's also get rid of this excess length in the sample. So if this happens, you can hold Alt and that'll allow you to drag off the grid. And if you hold Control and then click drag, you will clone it. So now we have this happening on these other beats. Maybe we have this one on a bit of a more odd beat. And we hit playback. And first things first, let's bring our volume down to something. I'm just gonna do a general takedown of like 10 dB. And if you want your waves to still appear big, you can hold Alt and scroll your mouse wheel and that'll scale the waveform so you can still sort of see what's going on. And maybe pull this up a bit. All right, so with this setup, uh, let's go ahead and grab another. And again, I'm going to hold control and scroll and that'll change our Y axis view and control shift to zoom in uh, horizontally. So now let's grab a let's grab a clap or something. I don't know. Let's close this folder. You can double click to close them. And we have a claps and snares. Uh, let's see here. What what looks good? Dusty trip hop. Is this single claps? Oh, it is. Oh, cool. So yeah, we'll we'll toss these on and layer them here. There's some verb on this, but I don't think it's it's that long of a verb. And let's also, while we're here, grab a hi-hat. And I keep wanting to click the folder icons, but you have to click the names. Uh, for here, do we have something with house in the name? Mm, I don't have anything with house. Oh, tech house right here. Let's see if we got something. I was looking for something a little shorter. Yeah, something like that. We could manipulate those other ones to do it, but I think it's, you know, just pick a sample that's gonna work. So we're zoomed out too far to be able to, you know, bring it in. So we have to zoom in here and we can hold Alt to get a variable grid size. And let's, uh, processing, hold Control and drag them out to get this four of them. And you know what, let's have them fill the, the beat so that when we duplicate, it like duplicates nicely. And we will hold control shift and hit control D to place down four of them. And now, and then let's say right here, we want to um, put our playhead over here. We want to have multiple. We can hold control alt to clone off the grid. And you can sort of write in these sort of more fun extra rhythms, maybe do some like weird tuplet stuff. Okay, so with this, let's go ahead now and take a look at some of the effects. So that's the basic drum sequencing workflow that I tend to use. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. You just pick your stuff, drag it on. It's mostly just getting the snap settings to work the way you want and knowing how to navigate the UI. After you sequence a few of these, you'll get the hang of it and it won't be an issue. Uh, this is also pretty loud compared to everything else. So we might consider here grabbing the volume control. So I'm gonna make this a bit bigger and scroll down here and pull this down, maybe like four. And let's go ahead and grab a uh, an effect to throw on some of these. So maybe these claps, maybe one of the claps uh, we have a reverb on, but the other clap we don't. Normally, if you're going to do this on a track, you'd have to load it in, a, in the mixer and you'd have to automate the effect at the specific moment that you want it. Uh, doing things to single samples is kind of tricky. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the object editor and in the effects tab, you can add a plugin. So we're going to click this and we'll go for a reverb and just grab whatever comes up. And here we go. The EFX reverb. That looks good to me. Slap this on and we'll just go with the default setting. It'll only apply to this object that we have selected. Oop, I shouldn't have grabbed that. There we go. We'll hit home. And that's friggin so useful. The ease of which it is to do that will definitely lead to some it makes processing like this pretty reasonable. Like, uh, say for example, we want an EQ. Oops, EQ. And we'll go for whatever for this EQ. Maybe we'll EQ it kind of funny. Something sort of strange here. And we could copy this object. And this is sort of a strange beat to put. Ah, oh, well, it, it could be interesting. And on this EQ, we could make it just a bit different. So just a heads up, because this always throws me, you have to come in and go to show effect dialog. And that's where it is. And then we could EQ this one slightly differently. And just have something. This is kind of like automation at specific points, but we could also have uh, the reverb on this. Maybe we could even choose a different reverb. We have the we have some D verbs. We have a melder reverb, sure. Let's grab this. So this isn't native. But, you know, we could grab just some completely different reverb, choose a setting for it. And now this has a different verb. This has a different verb. And no need to go into the mix. We didn't even open the mixer. There's no mixer. It's freaking, it's freaking crazy. And, you know, they're all processed differently. And then maybe on this one, maybe I was a bit, see, I always click it. I expect it to show up. Um, maybe not so heavy with this and just a small like little boost nothing nuts and you could come through and really fine tune this it's really kind of also entertaining to watch it move down the objects list because when you make these it references each one as like its own object there's hi-hats our claps our supplemental kicks and then like our main kicks but that's how I like to sequence and sequoia when it comes to drums. Uh, kind of different. It could take a little bit because there's a lot of sort of small things you got to have in order before the workflow starts to come together and you feel like you're more focused on making music than, you know, going through menus and learning the hotkeys. But once you have all those things down, it's actually super fun and it really encourages you to explore effects and see what you could do with the different loops. And again, if you want to change your snap settings, because uh, we've been using 16th notes, all you have to do is come up to your quantization, because that's what we use. So if you want to do like triplets on the grid or something like that, uh, you can do that up here. And there's always another menu with just extra options. It always runs deeper uh, than you need. So if you need to go deeper, that option is always there. If you have any questions about this, feel free to let me know. Subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day. Day.